Frisco officials hear passionate feedback on the town's Black Lives Matter mural, both good and bad. Phil Lindemann, Crystal, 93 News. Moments ago, more than 20 people called into the Frisco Town Council meeting to comment on the town's Black Lives Matter mural, including Shannon Galpin, lead artist on the mural, from outside council chambers. I'm outside because we can't go inside. I'd like to show you who showed up today in support of the town. Um, we're so grateful. Most comments were in support of the mural, including other artists, business owners, county commissioner candidates, and Summit School Board members like Gloria Quintero. I think that this is a great move to the right direction for our children to start feeling welcome and to really engage on that part of being equal and to have equity in our community. One resident, Gail Partridge, pointed to the dark side of public art when tied to protest. I don't think that anybody really experienced what I did this Saturday. I had to turn left onto Highway 9, and I was verbally accosted. I was alone in my car. I'm 78 years old. I had people surrounding my car with Antifa flags and a big Black Lives Matter um, sign. The mayor promised to have Frisco PD investigate her case. Another resident, Barb Cole, suggested a God Bless America mural to balance the BLM statement, while another, Don Parsons, had this challenge for council. Keep the mural, but also move forward with your town policies. Town officials say that mural is temporary. By the time snow flies, it will fade. Summit County's latest tax data shows COVID might not be the black hole officials once feared for everyone except Brackenridge. County tax revenue this May was down 7% for a year-to-date decline of 11.4%. Early estimates feared a loss of at least 25%, and we are coming off a bona fide boom year in 2019 when county revenue was up 20% over 2018. Trends in most local towns mirror the county, including Silverthorne, where revenue this May was actually higher than last May. And then there is Breckenridge, where tax revenue through May was down 21%, and total sales were down 44%. Retail lost 34% that month. Restaurants 79% and short-term lodging profits sunk by 94%. The final month rentals were closed by public health orders. Even Breck's real estate transfer tax was down 31% in June, nearly 36% year to date. The sales tax roller coaster is still a concern for local towns, though, and some county commissioner candidates warned the effects of COVID shutdown are just beginning. Daryl Bohall, running for District 2, serving Frisco and Dillon. Totally shutting down our economy, I don't think was the best thing to do long term. Candidate Alan Bacher of District 1 in Breckenridge compares recovery to sailing a boat or driving through a snowstorm. Sometimes the corrections that you have to put in are gradual and you see results. If you swerve too quickly, you'll end up in a ditch on a car. Bacher believes locals are already overtaxed and points to grocery and food sales. Grocery and liquor account for 7 to 8% of all tax revenue in Breck. Restaurants, 15 to 17%. And Bacher would fight to make food tax-free. Sales tax on food it has a disparate impact on the lowest level of, of the quintile, the lowest 20% of wage earners. They're spending a disproportional amount of their net income on housing and food. Stay tuned every week for more interviews with county commissioner candidates weighing in on local issues. The former owner of Jersey Boys Pizza, Craig Sikorsky, pleaded guilty to a pair of felony sex crimes earlier this year and now spends 18 years in prison. 51-year-old Sikorsky was sentenced yesterday for two-plus decades worth of child sex assault and exploitation. He was caught in 2019 when he lured a local child under the guise of dog walking. Soon after his arrest, accusations surfaced from the 90s when he touched a pair of local children in their backyard. Breck's new water plant and plastic bag fees are on town council agendas in Frisco and Breckenridge tonight. At the Frisco meeting, happening right now, town council votes on whether to extend a hold on the town's newly instated plastic bag fee. For now, bags are free townwide due to COVID. In Breck, council hears the latest on a $53 million water plant north of town, scheduled to be finished next Monday. It should be online by end of the year. Expect road closures on westbound I-70 this week between Silverthorne and Frisco, patching potholes and filling ruts. Elise Thatcher with CDOT. So we are anticipating significant impacts to westbound traffic going up Silverthorne Hill. Just FYI, plan accordingly. And we may need to require a closing a nearby exit, but to be determined and also weather dependent. Work on I-70 continues next week with more pothole and rut repair between Silverthorne and the tunnels.
In sports, the Rockies played the Athletics in Oakland tonight at 740. And in local sports, brought to you by American Family Insurance, the Weiss Agency. Today is opening day for race three of the Summit Mountain Challenge Town Series on a virtual mountain bike course at Pennsylvania Gulch, east of Breck. Timing starts now at 5 p.m. And you've got until 8 p.m. tomorrow to track your time on a mix of cross-country and enduro segments. Read more at mavsports.com. Bill Lindemann, Crystal 93 News.